Joshua chapter 1, uh, chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. Uh, now let us read it together. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have not come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Amen. What happened this line is all church members disappeared all together <laughs> inside. Okay. It's like uh, the Red Sea. The <laughs> My role is like the most here today. Uh, when I was a college student, I used to go to my my father's church. My father is pastor in countryside. And every Sunday, I'm, so I'm used to use the bus so every Sunday or every Saturday. And especially my church, my father's church needed an elementary uh, school teacher. So uh, I voluntarily I served as an elementary uh, school teacher at church. So every afternoon at uh, 1 p.m. Then after lunch time, uh, while I'm serving uh, as a, the elementary teacher for my students, and then one person, one elementary uh, student, uh, she was troublemaker. <laughs> she is uh, so cute, but she was not willing to listen to the voice of a pastor. And then one day, I wanted to uh, bring her uh, into our uh, church. And I visited uh, uh, her home, and I said, I shouted uh, at the, the doorway entrance. I said, hey, please come out. Let's go. It's time to go. Let's worship together. And then she opened the door, and then she coming out, and she said, teacher, where is God? <laughs> that time, her age is only, uh, I think, nine years old. <laughs> she said, I never seen with my eyes. Where is God? Can you prove it? Then I could not speak at all because that time I didn't meet God in person. So, so I could not explain how God looks like. Probably our elder maybe, probably God looks like you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> probably you might say. Yeah, but, but I could not explain how he looks like. But one day, and two weeks later, I've heard about the, the sad news. And that, that student, and she crossed the street, and then she got car accident. And then her two legs broken. And my father, he, uh, let's go to the, the hospital uh, to see what happened to her. And then I opened the door, and I entered it, and then she, she lied on the, the bed, and then she cried a lot, and her leg is totally broken, and then she started speaking. Teacher, yeah? Now I know my God is a living God. I'd love, to, I'd love to believe in Jesus Christ. I'd love to come to church. Yeah. <laughs> After the car accident, she confessed her sins. She loved to participate in worship service together. So I learned a lot about that, how to meet God from her. How incredible her testimony is. She said, I believe in his son God, God his son Jesus Christ. Please forgive my sins and transform into a newborn Christian. Nowadays, we are seeking God's existence. It seems that God does not respond to our prayer. When Russia invaded Ukraine, the Putin, the Russian president, he probably regarded himself as an absolute leader, 
without recognizing the existence of God. But as always, there is an end, the end of a tyranny. In World War II, Hitler, he regarded himself as a superhuman being. Actually, you know the Superman, the, 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 the Superman, the DC movie, the animation, the creature, uh, the movie actually uh, made by the Jewish. And then the, the image is from, do you know Eliza? Uh, in the Old Testament, Eliza? Eliza has a mantle. So that's why the, one of the Jewish writers, uh, he made uh, the Superman. So based upon the image of Eliza. So Hitler, he thought himself, I'm like a superhuman being. And also he, uh, he loved to uh, read the book about, about the Nietzsche, the German philosopher. His name is Nietzsche. He mentioned the superhuman being. So he said, I am the superhuman being. But however, as you know, his last appearance, he committed suicide with his wife. He used the gun. Then how can, how can we truly become God's newborn creature? Today, my sermon, the title is The Holy Place Where God Dwells. Last Sunday, I preached about the 12 tribes. They brought the 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan River to commemorate, to memorize God's salvation. Now, I'm going to preach about uh, how Joshua and the 12 tribes, they started believing God. So I want to focus on two points. Number one, so let us read it together. Let us renew, renew every day, day by inscribing God's words on our heart. heart. And let us read Joshua chapter 5, verses 2 and 3. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelites. And I give what I wrote. So imagine this. What does it mean, circumcision? All, you, all men, we know about the, what does it mean, the circumcision. Imagine this. If the Jericho people, they knew about the circumcision for the Israelites, they might say it is really great chance to kill all the Israelite soldiers. Think about the circumcision. In general, after man gets circum circumcision, they need a time of recovery. How long? Probably seven days to recover I mean, their normal body. And let us read uh, Joshua chapter 5, verse 8 together. And after the whole nation had been circumcised, they remained where they were in camp until they were healed. Imagine this. They crossed the Jordan River. They brought the 12 stones, the 12 stones actually previously in the middle of the Jordan River. And then they brought all 12 stones. They commemorate, they memorize the gospel salvation. And suddenly they got circumcision. Also people, do you know the pain, how painful it is a circumcision? All men we know, except the female. <laughs> yeah, all human, all men we know. The recovery, the time is seven days. Suffering, but why? Why God commanded the circumcision? The especially the important time. Right now, it's time to battle against Jericho, but why circumcision for seven days? We have to endure that. Because the reason why in the Bible, the older generation, older generation means that the first time, the first generation, when they escaped from Egypt, the older generation, they already get God's circumcision. That is the symbol of the God's people. And all people, 40 years later, all the generation passed away. Now, God commanded it. Now, it's time, new generation between you and me, new covenant, 
That's why God commanded it. New circumcision for the young generation. Hallelujah. This means, this is a very meaningful. When you come to church, you confess to yourself, you should meet God in person. The old generation gone, and now new generation is us. You come to here to spend mission service. Why you come here? Because you want to confess. Because you want to meet God in person. Right now, you might think about, oh, I'm still following previous, my past, my habit. Now you have to change. When you come here, you should confess yourself. You should meet God in person. Hallelujah. Before I met God in person, I could not explain how God looks like. If I knew, if I met Melvin, then I can, I probably I could say, oh, God looks like Melvin. He's like, he is very handsome and his <laughs> voice is very good. And like the president Bushi, he looks like this. Something like that. I, I probably I could explain how he looks like. But that time, I did not meet God in person. That's why I could not explain the existence of God to that, that child. But I met God in person. Let me explain. My father, at the age of 29, he met God in person. And he, was, and he went to the, a prayer meeting, special personal room, and he prayed to God that time. He got the lung kind of cancer here. And then he prayed to God, Father, our Heavenly Father, please heal me, recur me, save me. And God responded to my father's prayer. And he decided to serve his whole life to serve, you know, uh, Korean church members, especially countryside. And then that time I was a middle school student. And he brought me and every Sunday, especially early morning prayer. Do you know what time early, early morning prayer? 4 a.m. So every Sunday, 4 a.m., he woke me up and he said, Ito, stand up. Let's go to the, let's, let, let us pray together. Ah, I did not want to go there to church. Think about Antonio, your first time come here. Your daddy called you, oh, 4 a.m., let's go. Let's pray together. Can you pray? Every Sunday, 4 a.m., I pray and I just sleep in. I did not pray. And think about it, 9.30 a.m., also early morning worship service with uh, uh, our uh, church members. And then lunchtime, every lunchtime, we ate together. And every 1 p.m., likewise, I mentioned, that I, I, I shouted, hey, children, please come to our special children uh, worship service. And 3.30 p.m., I participated especially afternoon worship service. The whole day Sunday, I participated in worship service, but I did not meet God in person. I did not want to go to church. It's like an old generation. All church members, they praise the Lord, but the song is out of date. But think about the nowadays, all new generation, we like uh, the BTS, you know, DNA, something like that. But I think you know the song, yeah? <laughs> or, you know, uh, how can it, di dynamite, something like that. Yeah, we like this song, like, like that. But I met God in person. My life totally changed. Before my daddy comes to 3.55 a.m., I woke up. Father, let's go, let's pray <laughs> together. I cleaned my church by myself. I, I was very exciting. I'd love to participate in worship service. Right now, I'd love to ask all of you. Now it's time 2 p.m. 2, uh, 10, 2, 2 10 p.m. After lunch time, you're very sleepy. You're full enough, right? Not sleepy. Can you focus on my sermon? <laughs> Are you sure you want to go come to the church? Then why you come to church? Why? Because you know I loved God in person here right now. And we all of us confess our faith. 
And we are new generation. Before you do something, you have to meet God. You have to get new covenant before God. Hallelujah. That's why Joshua and the Israelites, before the battle, they got new circumcision by themselves. Hallelujah. All of us, we have to meet God in person. Therefore, let us read the Second Corinthians. Oh, this appears. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter five, verses seventeen, eighteen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Now. Uh, next to, sir, uh, please, yes, yeah. Let us read together. Let, Let us, us take, take up our former sins, sins on the holy place where God, God dwells. dwells. After circumcision, Joshua was near Jericho. He faced a very surreal experience. And let us read Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. Now, now when, when Joshua, Joshua was near Jericho, Jericho he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you foreigners or for our enemies? Neither, they cried. But as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, but the place where you're standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Joshua, he could see a man standing. The man here with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua, his question is reasonable. Are you for us or are you my enemies? You might expect his answer. Think about before Joshua, the angel, the man of God standing there, and probably he expected, you are my side, right? Probably I ask, who are you? Are you for me or my enemies? Probably you expect, I am your side, right? Have a think about, you come here, and the Holy Spirit, the angel of God, comes to you, and you probably tremble before his feet, and you fell down, your face down, and you could see and open your eye, you could see an angel, and probably you ask him, Who are you? Are you for me or for my enemies? And probably you expected the answer, I am your side, right? But here, neither, <laughs> neither. Why the angel of God answered, neither. This, this, this situation is a very similar Moses calling. Let us read Exodus chapter 3, verse 5 together. Do not, not come, come any closer, God said. Take, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. ground. Moses he climbed the mountain and he could see the fire within the burning bush. And that time Moses he wanted to listen and he wanted to know who are you. He might expect, I am your side. Go, I will be with you. But here the condition. If you want to God's people, we have a condition. We have to take off our sins. Our sins. Moses, he called by God, but there was condition. He had to take off his previous past sins. That's why God mentioned, take off your shoes. This place is the holy place. And Joshua as well, God commanded, take off your sandals. Then why? God commanded, take off your sandals. I do not love to ask my shoes. I brought, today I brought my shoes. My, uh, a little bit dirty, yeah. <laughs> do you know my sins? Then I can hear his voice. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. What are you doing? I know. Yes. 
Even Sanders could not speak at all. He knows where you are, where, what, what kind of you did. Your sandals, your shoes know everything. So take off your sin, take off your dust, and then here you become God's newborn Christian. Hallelujah. This place, the holy place. You want to be uh, the holy people? You have to confess your sins. Saint, Saint Augustine, uh, he is a very famous, he is a theologian and bishop of a hippo in 430. He wrote many great books such as The City of God and Confessions. Especially Confessions, Augustine, he confessed his sins. At the age of 17, he already got a son with a young woman. And she gave birth to a son before his marriage. Even if his mother warned against sex outside of marriage, but against uh, but Augustine persisted in his fornication, he could not overcome his sins. But according to his confessions, one day, one day he could listen a voice outside. And a child, a voice of a child. The voice of a child. The Latin word, which means take up and read. And then he bring, he brought the Bible and he turned the Bible and he started reading the Bible. Romans chapter. 13 verses 14 to 15. Let us read together. Let us behave disorderly as, as in the daytime, not, not in crossing and drunkenness, not in sexual, sexual immorality, immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. And jealousy. Rather call yourselves to the Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Do not Let think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. flesh. That's why. At the age of 31, he took off his past sins and finally become, became a newborn Christian. My friends, are you preparing for a new journey? Or are you fighting against new obstacles before you? Before you pray for God's help, you should meet God in person. You should become a newborn Christian. And you should take off your past sandals, I mean your past sins before God. God will take over your place and make your place His holy place. God will fight for you. Hallelujah. Now let us uh, praise the song together. We fall down. <clears throat> Oh 
and Joshua and the Israelites, before their battle, they decide to get circumcision. Even though circumcision is a very painful, but it's not reasonable, but they decide to get circumcision. Why? Because they want to be a God's newborn, His people. Think about you. You come to church, you want to meet God in person, you truly love to God, you truly love to see God, and you should be born again. You should meet God again. Now let us pray together. Father, we want to meet you. We want to meet you in person. Father, comes to our spend ministry worship service, our church members, and each one confess, and each one see you, each one meet you, and all of those changes, and let us transform your newborn Christian. How about praying together? You want to meet God? Then you have to take off your sandals. I mean your past sins. You come to here, you have to confess your sins and take off your sandals, take, your, take off your burdens, take off your sins and then you can confess this place is God's holy place. Now let us confess our sins here. Let us pray together. Father, we come here and just as Moses he took off his sandals, Joshua, Ezra, he took off his sandals. Father, we for our own sins. We want to confess before you. We want to take off our sins. Father, let us confess you. You are holy and holy. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for today's message through Joshua's circumcision and his encounter with you in your holy place. Father, all of us want to meet you in person. Please transform us into your people with the power of Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins before you and experience your holy place here, this place, so that we experience you are taking over us. May we become your newborn Christians. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, another time.